has the aroma of a home cooked meal taking you back to memory lane. If you've tasted a dish that reminded you of the good times, then you must try today's featured restaurant. From classic American to comfort foods and childhood favorites, they craft meals that you'll never forget. I'm Stacy, and you're watching In the Kitchen with Stacy Static. Stay tuned for our special guest from Reed's American Table. Joining me is Matthew Doaday, executive chef and owner at Reed's American Table. Welcome to the kitchen, chef. How are you? Yeah, thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for doing this because, you know, I know he's shy. So let's just go ahead and put that out there. So I appreciate this. So what are we making today? It smells delicious already. Uh, we're going to do our black pepper gnocchi mm. that we do on the menu at the restaurant. Okay. It is uh, a play off a dish that I loved as a kid growing up, which was uh, pasta con broccoli. Okay. So it's a cream-based sauce with a little bit of garlic. Parmesan, the black pepper gnocchi, which we make in-house, broccoli, a little bit of chili flake. We'll top it off with some hazelnuts at the end. Hazelnuts? I was wondering what kind of nuts those are. Yeah, okay. it adds just like a little crunch and, and savory to the dish. And I don't have a nut aversion. I don't have an issue with those. So let's, let's uh, get going. Uh, so you started with what? So we're starting out with just a little bit of butter in the pan, and then mm -hmm. we'll kind of slowly toast the garlic, just bring out that nice garlic flavor from mm -hmm. it. Um, as soon as we get a little bit of browning on that garlic, then we'll start building the cream sauce by adding a little bit of cream to it and let that cream reduce down. Instead of doing kind of a normal roux based sauce with mm -hmm. flour and milk, right. um, the cream to me adds a little bit more creaminess and uh, unctuousness to that dish. So. Do you add like a nutmeg to your, your cream sauces? Um, we will sometimes when appropriate. This one, I kind of yeah. like that garlic popping out of it. Okay. So we kind of make it a really forward garlic sauce. Okay. But a lot of those traditional sauces will have that nutmeg just kind of to finish. They will, they will. Yeah. So we're getting started. Anytime you have garlic in a dish, it already, I mean, it just sets the tone for what the dish is about to be like. Your, your house starts to smell really good. So this is definitely comfort food at its finest. And that's what you all do at Reed's, right? Yeah, we try to keep it simple and classic and, and things that people are familiar with. But mm -hmm. at the same time, give our own take to it and, and update where we can. So why black pepper and yoki? Um, to me, it's also playing off another kind of classic dish, which is uh, cacio de pepe, which oh. would be a Parmesan and black pepper sauce. Oh, okay. um, so they'll, they'll use Parmesan, butter, and uh, black pepper, and it's just a really, really simple kind of, it reminded me of pasta con broccoli the first time I had it. Really? So we kind of took the both of them and merged it together, um, and we're choosing to use a gnocchi to kind of harken to that dish okay. Um, instead of a traditional like fettuccine or linguine noodle. So it's like basically what you do, you take everything that you like, like you take, um, like you said, pasta con broccoli from say uh, the now defunct Cicero's that we yep. beloved Cicero's um, and some other dish that you've tried and you just kind of collaborate between the two. How often do you do that? Is that something that you normally do to come up with recipes? Yeah, just about every dish on our menu has <laughs> some sort of connection to when I was a kid or something that I ate gotcha. somewhere that, you know, I think food should bring back those happy, good memories that you had. I agree. And uh, it, it makes it better. So for us, you know, trying to find dishes that our customers re relate to in the same way. Do you ever take suggestions? Oh, yeah. Always. Oh, really? Oh, okay, always, cool. Because I'm always coming up with something like, oh, I remember it was this. Well, you know, there, I, I'm still chasing a dragon with this chocolate chip cookie I had years and years ago at this little, I don't even know what it was, it was like a cafe in the Central West End, and it was around the corner from my dad's house, and they had the best chocolate chip cookie. I know it had to be a French bakery, I do know that, because just the chocolate chip cookies that I've had lately, I'm like, no, it was definitely a French bakery, and it was like mini chocolate chip cookies, and I'm, I'm still trying to find that recipe, so I get it. I'm like chasing this recipe that I've not been able to find again. So you just added what? So we just added our cream and mm -hmm. a little bit of Parmesan. Okay. And uh, we'll just bring that up to a boil. And you'll start noticing the, the cream get thicker as the bubbles start kind of growing. Okay. Um, as it reduces down, the sauce thickens up. The Parmesan kind of adds that consistency to it as well. And um, what are we looking for when you're thickening cream sauces? Because, you know, um, they can break. Like for our home cooks out there, like if you make a cream sauce and it breaks, like what are you looking for so you know it's ready to go? 
So yeah, again, the, the kind of size of the bubbles as you start out, you'll get really, really small bubbles as it starts to thicken up. Mm -hmm. Those bubbles start getting a little bit larger. And the other thing that you're kind of looking for is how it coats the back of a spoon. Okay. You can kind of generally run your finger over it and kind of see that it will hold a line on there. And so generally, so as you see, the bubbles start getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, and this is really quick. I mean, I make this at home for my family all the time. It's, yeah. you know, a five minute meal really. Um, and there's not a lot of ingredients to it. Generally, it's something that you have at home. And you can add anything to it. I mean, we add broccoli to it, but any vegetable will kind of work. Okay. And, you know, we put the broccoli in raw, so there's no blanching ahead of time. There's uh -huh. no... And so, and again, you don't have to make your own gnocchi. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can if you, you know, if you want to be, you know, adventurous and crafty. Yeah. Is that a difficult thing to make, though? It's like you don't need, like, a pasta maker and all this other stuff. No, I mean, you can make... Um, so we make a ricotta gnocchi. Okay. Um, so all it is is ricotta cheese, flour, and a little bit of egg yolk to bind it. Oh, okay. Um, you can put all that just in a mixing bowl and just kind of knead it. It's something that you can make with your kids at home. Oh. It's, a, it's a very, very simple dish. Okay. Do, um, you, do you roll it out and you like boil it like that? Like how, how, what's next with that? Yeah, so once you kind of have the dough, you're going to flatten it out mm -hmm. and we'll cut it in small pieces and just kind of roll like a cord, you know, oh, okay. just like a rope of gnocchi basically. Mm -hmm. And then cut them to the size that you want. Gotcha. Um, we use a gnocchi board to give the kind of ridges that you see on the outside. But again, kind of an unnecessary step if you don't really want to at home. Mm -hmm. You can take a fork and roll it over the back of a fork and it just adds a little bit of texture and shape to it the ridges hold the sauce a little bit better. Okay. But, I mean, again, you can t do the very simple of just rolling out gnocchi, cutting them out, and dropping it in a pot of water. Got you. It's not a difficult dish at all. It sounds no. delicious. No. So how did you even get into cooking? Like, what was the first dish you learned how to cook? Um, the first dish I learned how to cook was probably uh, my, my sister's boyfriend always used to come to the house and make fried potatoes with a little bit of onions. And, uh, it, again, very, very simple. <laughs> um, Comfort food. But, the guy likes his comfort food. But, you know, being eight, nine years old right. and, and not knowing how to do too much on a stove, it was something that I could easily kind of put together. And, you know, he showed me how to heat up the pan and put butter in and right. how to brown the potatoes. And, you know, I grew up in a family that we did dinner every night at six o'clock. You know, the dinner bell rings and you had to be there. Got you. No excuses. So and it's all so, tied to memories and, and having comfort foods. You know what? We're going to let this continue to cook. And we're going to take a quick break, so stay right there. I cannot wait to try it. It smells delicious. It looks even better. And I have another guest coming to join us when we return, so hold on. Hello and welcome back to In the Kitchen. Our next guest is a self-published author, entrepreneur, and coach who empowers women to start their own businesses. Joining me in the studio right now is Teresa Dickerson. Hey, how are Hi. you? Hi. Welcome to In the Kitchen. Thank you for having me. So tell me about your businesses. Whew, well, um, I'm the owner of T Couture Boutique. Okay. Uh, T Couture Salon. Oh. Have a Footprints Learning Academy. Wow. Um, and also in the process, open up a call center. Okay. Wow. To do what? Who are you calling? <laughs> um, supplying jobs for the youth as well. 
I'm just okay. inbound, outbound calls. Okay, got yes. you. All right, so you got you know, she's got the mompreneur <laughs> thing down. So uh, tell me about this book, your step-by-step -step startup guide, the blueprint to owning your own fashion boutique. For all you boutique owner people out there that want to start their own boutiques, tell me about it. Yeah, this. so the book I wrote the book um, because I know when I was starting my business, I didn't have no mentor or anybody to help me, you know, get started. Right. So my process was to help others get started. Okay. So this book will just like um, give general ideas, information, how to get started, and then I also have what you call boutique kits, okay. where somebody could purchase a 12 piece, a 20 piece, or a 50 piece boutique kit, and it eliminates the overhead, and they can make 100% profit on these kits. So it's almost like a, I don't know, so what's in this kit? What's in the kit? Um, there are clothing in the kit. Okay. Um, plus size clothing, regular clothes, and sometimes jewelry and purses. Oh, okay, so if you wanted to do like an accessory boutique, you would get like that yes. or, okay, something that you specialize in. So you didn't have anything like this when you started out. No, I no. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you felt the needs of other people and other boutique owners and some of the mistakes that they could make and some things that they would need, and you found a need. So is that right. one of the tips that you give in this book about just finding a need, so maybe it's not fashion, it could be something else? Well, this book is strictly um, geared towards fashion. Okay. Yes. All right. I do also have boutique seminars, and I teach other businesses, you know, how to get started as well. Okay. So you have fields. So you have an event coming up. Tell me about it. I do. It's called Glambition. Okay. What is that? Glambition is a woman's business empowerment event. Okay. And this is the second year. Mm -hmm. um, this year is about um, fearless, being fearless in business, oh. doing business by faith. So I have 10 speakers okay. um, coming from Atlanta, North Carolina, Kansas City. Other female business owners? Yes. Okay. And then we have 10 uh, business women vendors okay. as well. So the um, audience will have a Glambition passport that they have to activate. And the activation requires them to interact with the other um, vendors as okay. well. Okay. And then there's also the Glambition magazine release we're doing. Oh, you got a lot. Also. Glambition. <laughs> Glambition. Now, when is this taking place and where? May 5th. Okay. At Lowe's Entertainment. Okay, so it's Cinco de Mayo and it's Glambition. You can check out the info right there on your screen, right there at Lowe's. And uh, it's, it's a centralized location. It's right off the highway. It's right. super convenient. So right. this is going to be great. So make sure you get more information at that uh, email address right there. So, yeah, that's nice. Thank you so much You're for coming welcome. in and sharing all of your knowledge with us today. And you make sure you pick up the book. Where can they find it? Um, you go on Amazon, type my name, Teresa Dickerson. Um, you come in the store, the boutique, mm -hmm. purchase the book as well. Okay, so make sure you do that and uh, get this from her. So, Chef, how are we looking over there with this gnocchi? It smells delicious. I'm yeah. hungry. I've been saving my appetite for this all day. What's up? So we're just finishing <laughs> up. The sauce got to a nice consistency. We dropped a the gnocchi's in there, let them cook down a little bit just to kind of soak up that sauce. Nice. So we'll just put it in a bowl here. Okay. All right, and you, I see red pepper flakes, so that adds a little kick, I guess, but not too much. Yeah, just a little spice. You gotta wake up the taste buds a little bit as yeah. you eat food. So we'll tap with a little bit of hazelnuts here. So why hazelnuts? Um, they kind of have like a sweet earthiness to them, which okay. I think matches up with the broccoli and garlic and cream. Okay. And Texture to me is a big part of a dish. It's got to have good texture, um, so a little crunch goes a long way. Okay. Well, so, give right. you guys a spoon and let you guys uh, try it out. And you said this is on the menu. This is on the menu. And Reed's American Table. Uh, if you don't know Reed's, make sure you get the information about Reed's because apparently brunch is the place to be, baby. I don't know what's going on in, on your brunch menu, but everybody's telling me I need to try it. Yeah, brunch right. is the uh, the hot spot to be right now. That's good. Mmm. Fire, fire, I'm coming, I'm coming, you got me, you got me. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very, very much. All of these flavors, it's so, it's, it's good, it's good, it's great. Yeah. So thank you for joining us on this episode of In the Kitchen with me, Stacey Static, and thank you to Chef Joe Day from Reed's American Table and Teresa Dickerson of Glambition. For more information on STL TV or In the Kitchen, make sure you download the STL TV app or connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. See you next time.